prices for cyber insurance coverage have moderated with carriers reluctant to extend large limits on any given policy. These are just two of the trends touched on in a new AMS special report on cyber, which has become the fastest growing segment in the property casualty sector. I'm Lori Chortis for AMS TV, and joining us today is AMS Senior Director Sridhar Manyam and Senior Industry Research Analyst Chris Graham, who co-authored this recently issued cyber report. Sridhar and Chris, welcome. Thanks so much Thanks. for joining us. Thanks. Good morning. Thank you for having us. Chris, it's no secret that COVID-19 shifted a large portion of the U.S. workforce into remote working conditions. From a cyber insurance standpoint, has there been a knock-on effect here? Oh, certainly. A, a lot, you know, where a lot of companies shifted to a remote workforce, uh, there might not have been necessarily all the security in place. So it was easy for the employees to get in and do their work, but it was also easy for hackers and, and hostile actors to uh, to get in as well uh, without the proper security systems in place. And that did have an effect on the, the insurance pricing. Obviously, it brought in a whole bunch of new claims and the, the cyber insurers had to respond. Uh, what it exposed is you have to treat every company as a tech company. Everyone has a computer, every business has a computer system. So they're all tech companies, even if that's not their main industry right now. Sridhar, while the report notes that rates for cyber have increased, what are some other indicators of market conditions? Yeah, Laurie, I think the market conditions right now in the cyber insurance space is very dynamic. There is a lot of factors at play. The first one, of course, is the pricing that you mentioned. So pricing in 2021, on average, according to the Council of Insurance Agents and Brokers, averaged around 26, point, uh, 26 plus points uh, uh, percentage in 2021. And 2020, again, it is the fastest growing line in terms of pricing, and it averaged around 20 plus percentage points in 20, uh, 2022. So pricing wise, there has been a lot of increase in prices, and this is because insurance companies are really trying to find out what is the appropriate uh, price for cyber. There's lack of historical loss information like you have for other lines. Cyber is making headline news. And insurers are con concerned about systemic risk, which is, which is happening because there's no diversification that this line affords. A line like property, you can diversify according to, uh, uh, according to geography. It's got a time component to it where there's a hurricane season, even though uh, be, uh, even though it's not really applicable these days, but still there's a time component, there's a geography comp a component which is not happening in cyber. So insurers are worried about the loss potential and they are uh, uh, trying to find the appropriate pricing and uh, they are indicating that through rate increases and the market is accepting these rate increases because uh, on the demand side, Consumers and businesses are becoming more aware of cyber because of headline news happening, ransomware uh, and social engineering uh, uh, exercises by cyber criminals resulting in financial and reputational damage to these consumers and corporations. So there is a huge demand for 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 these uh, uh, for, for for the cyber risk as well. Apart from size, uh, pricing, insurers are also trying to manage the risk by trying to make sure that the limits that they are offering their clients is uh, not big enough, such that when there is a loss that happens, they, they don't breach their risk tolerance levels. And consumers are again reacting by, uh, if there are higher prices, let me shift some of, my, some of these risks into captives, so that some of the uh, captives are becoming a more popular solution for uh, cyber risk management. Some might look at the $1.4 billion loss that Merck encountered from NotPetya as a benchmark event, but is there thought that this may be a low tide mark for the cyber market? Sridhar, why, why might that be the case? Uh, the NotPetya event, Laurie, one has to realize that uh, it was a cyber event, but it was actually the 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 loss that we were talking about is a was on a property policy, right? So so this was a classic example of early stages of cyber, where the policy wordings were ambiguous. There was lack of clarity. 
Therefore, the client and the insurer had some uh, ways to look at it in terms of, hey, this is a property policy, therefore, this is, uh, uh, therefore there is a coverage dispute. So, having said that, the lessons learned from NotPetya was that there needs to be more focus on eliminating silent cyber, which is the cyber risk that could be hidden in other policies like property policies, liability policies. And insurers started looking at uh, their policy wordings carefully and started making it clear and trying to eliminate silent cyber risks to a, uh, to a large extent. The other thing that uh, NotPetya also uh, uh, kind of highlighted was the fact that the entire the industry loss was close to $10 billion, but only $1.4 billion was really insurance losses, just uh, highlighting the coverage gap that could exist in uh, cyber insurance market. Uh, also on that, Lori, you know, we, the $1.4 billion, like Shredder said, it, it was a property loss, um, but it was, you know, I, it was a very large loss considered, you know, what the cyber premium was at the time. And what you're starting to see now is some companies price their policies similar to a property in that there's an attritional loss ratio and a cat load now. So it, we're also seeing some of the pricing increasing coming from uh, what we what we learned as an industry out of that, you know, one large loss. Uh, also, what's being tested out of this is the uh, the war exclusion, right? And that you know that's going to be a big part of how it plays out because when was the last time we actually had a formal declaration of war? It's 80 years ago, back in World War II. But we've been in armed conflicts all around the world. So you know, is the nature of war itself changing as well? These are all things that are going to play out in the courts, also, which leads to some uncertainty and then as well to the systemic risk that Schroeder was addressing. Chris, what role could the insurance-linked securities market play in the cyber market going forward? Yeah, so it took a while to get there, but there's actually, you know, a couple of, of them offered now. Um, really, it's, it's going to bring extra capacity to the cyber insurance market. Uh, you know, this is, again, part of the pricing issue is that there's a strain on capacity. Uh, you know, the, the insurers have to get a certain amount for, you know, return for the capacity they're offering. And, you know, any extra capacity that comes in in the form of, you know, the, these almost like it almost works like a cat bond on the property side. Uh, that's just going to help the insurers be able to write a little bit more, expand the market a little bit and maybe, you know, curtail some of the, the pricing extremes that we've seen so far. Yeah, I think. Just uh, uh, well, as Chris said, this is a, another example of the insurance industry going towards uh, attritional loss component and a cat loss component. Maybe the attritional lo uh, the cat loss component can has a place in the ILS market, and uh, as Chris said, it's being tested right now with the issuance of a couple of these uh, cyber related uh, uh, insurance linked securities. And uh, as they mature and uh, people get more comfortable with uh, assuming uh, cyber risk in the form of a CAD bond, uh, I think uh, these could become more popular in the future as a risk management tool. That was AMS Senior Director Sridhar Manyam and Senior Industry Research Analyst Chris Graham. For AMS TV, I'm Lori Chortis.